morning for our monthly training webinar series with the um, Blue Child Guide website. My name is Faye Augustin and I'm the Intermountain West Blue Child Manager for American Rivers. Um, I'm really excited that you, all of you are able to join us today. Um, so I'm just going to give a couple of quick um, overview points on our webinar today, Community Benefits of Open Space and Recreation. So a couple quick things. Um, if you lose connection at all during the webinar, um, feel free to log in again using your unique web link and passcode that was provided to you when you registered for the webinar. Um, as always, our webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing um, next Tuesday, May 23rd at bluechildguide.org slash blog. Um, and then my contact information is at the bottom in case you guys have any questions. And then finally, um, we really encourage this to be a um, very interactive webinar, so please ask any and all questions that you might have um, throughout the webinar. So in the GoToWebinar panel that you have on the side of your screen, there is a question box. So feel free, please, to um, type in any questions that you may have throughout um, the webinar, and we will leave about five or ten minutes or so at the end of the webinar to answer as many questions as we can. We have our community forum that we really encourage you to visit um, and ask additional questions at um, after the webinar. And then additionally, um, we will also have a transcript of questions and answers to all of the questions that were asked by May 30th. Um, and that will be available online again at bluechildguide.org slash blog. So we just went over a couple of quick housekeeping things. Um, and uh, just two other kind of main things to go over. Um, we have two awesome speakers uh, today. My colleague, Jessica Saulis, who's with American Rivers, um, as well as Toby Sprunk, who is with Eagle County Open Space. Um, and they will both be joining me as well. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to just jump right into the meat of the presentation and introduce my colleague, um, Jessica Fowles, who's our Eagle River Blue Shell Coordinator. Jessica? Great. Thank you so much, Faye. My name is Jessica Fowles, and as Faye said, I'm the Eagle Blue Trail Coordinator uh, up here in Colorado. And today I'll be talking about the social and economic benefits of the Eagle Blue Trail, as well as how using blue trails to connect and preserve river corridors can maximize these benefits. So to get your bearings, uh, Eagle County is about two hours west of Denver over the Continental Divide. It's outlined in yellow on this map to give you an idea of where we're talking about. So Eagle County is built up around rivers. Uh, this gives you an idea of what the Eagle Blue Trail includes. So in the middle of the map running through, uh, goes from Gore Creek into the Eagle River and on the western side into the Colorado. And as you can see, most of the towns are built up along the Eagle River as well as Gore Creek, and then it's traditionally ranching along the Colorado River in Eagle County. The social benefits of the Eagle Blue Trail include connecting communities, healthy living, family fun, and play where you live. The Eagle, Blue Trip, the Eagle River runs through the county, connecting ranches, affordable housing, and even rent, ritzy hotels. Uh, it's something we all have in common throughout Eagle County, and as we connect and preserve the river corridor, we also connect communities. Additionally, the Eagle Blue Trail provides diverse opportunities to improve quality of life, whether it be through traditional river uses, such as angling and rafting and boating. And additionally, there are lots of trails along the river and opportunities for families to experience the river through hiking, biking, and picnicking. The economic benefits of the Eagle Blue Trail include tourism, ecosystem services, recruitment, and renewal and planning. Blue trails connect and preserve river corridors to create a tourism destination. So tourism is the actual dollars that enter the economy. And according to the Colorado River Outfitters Association, the Eagle Blue Trail contributed $12 million to Eagle County in 2014. According to Colorado Parks and Wildlife, the Eagle Blue Trail contributed $39 million 
and 617 jobs to the Eagle County economy in 2008. Additionally, there are draws from uses such as wildlife watching, hiking, and other uses that are a little bit more difficult to quantify. Ecosystem services are the intrinsic values provided by intact ecosystems, such as clean air, clean water, erosion and flood control, pollination, wildlife, carbon storage, and climate regulation. Formulas exist to quantify but may not include all of the intrinsic values. Regardless, it's always cheaper to and more economically sound to preserve ecosystem services with intact ecosystems than to pay to provide these services after ecosystems are damaged. Riparian ecosystems are especially important in our region because they are rich in local plants and wildlife. Once you become a destination by connecting and preserving the river corridors so people want to be here, you have an excellent place where people want to live and you can use that as a tool to recruit the best and brightest employees. Communities can use the river as an asset to highlight and attract visitors and residents alike. The Blue Trail program can provide guidance on how to best connect and protect the river corridor. Each town in Eagle County has a river corridor master plan to include strategic conservation and recreation planning. This improves the value of the communities around the river and helps them to have something to plan around. Toby Sprunk is here to share how Eagle County Open Space is working to maximize social and economic benefits by connecting and protecting river corridors. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Toby Spronk, Eagle County Open Space. I'm going to talk a little bit about our program and, and some of the accomplishments we've enjoyed over the last few years. Um, <clears throat> as Jessica said, um, Eagle County is in central Colorado. Um, 85% of the land in the county is already federal. You see the light green is national forest, the dark green is national forest wilderness, and the yellow uh, that you see mostly in the northwest part of the county is uh, BLM land. Uh, so in some respects, it's a challenging environment in which to engage land conservation. Uh, land conservation. Um, but we've done our best. Um, in terms of um, de program details, uh, Eagle County Open Space was created uh, by passage of a um, ballot measure in 2002, which created a 1.5 uh, mill levy and property tax. Uh, it passed very narrowly in 2002 by 51 votes, so uh, not exactly an overwhelming uh, mandate. Um, and in the early years of the program, uh, it, it worked mainly to acquire conservation easements on working ranches. These properties are, are scenic and beautiful and have great wildlife habitat, uh, but not much in the way of recreational access. Uh, the tax mm -hmm. currently generates about $4 million a year. The program sunsets in 2025. Uh, probably everybody here is quite familiar with the, um, the, the tanking of the real estate market in 2008. At that point in time, the uh, Board of County Commissioners elected to not make any more open space purchases. The idea was is to collect funds in anticipation of um, uh, good land deals that they knew would, would be coming. By 2011, the balance in the open space fund had risen to over $20 million. Uh, that's about the time they hired me to start. Uh, and the other thing they were aware of was the fact that the public was increasingly demanding properties with really good recreational um, access. Uh, the conservation easements that had been purchased in the program's early days were um, somewhat controversial, particularly in a county where so many people live here, um, to access uh, mountains and rivers. Um, in terms of the Colorado, we have 60 miles of the Colorado River. It flows uh, northeast to southwest through the county. Uh, the upper stretch uh, consists of a area we call Pump House to Radium to Rancho to State Bridge. That area received a, a lot of use. Um, BLM tracked over 65,000 user days uh, in the late 2000s, uh, and that led to a lot of um, crowding and in some cases abuse. 
the State Bridge property, which you'll see in a minute on the map, <clears throat> that was actually leased to a private outfitter, and there were a lot of people that wanted to access uh, that site, but the private outfitter was um, somewhat difficult to deal with, at least that's what a lot of people said, uh, and many outfitters uh, and even private boaters refused to access that uh, site. Um, so the other issues we encountered were, uh, we, we saw from, from our, um, our, our examination of the area was poor access between State Bridge and Catamount uh, due to um, the railroad blocking access, a lot of private land blocking access, and in some cases on the federal land, uh, topography uh, blocked the access. BLM had made many attempts to acquire the State Bridge property. Uh, they'd been unsuccessful in raising federal money to make those purchases. Um, Eagle County, of course, was sitting on this giant pile of open space funds, and our goal was to increase summertime economic opportunities. We've got Vale and Beaver Creek as, as the winter economic driver. We felt like we needed a summer economic draw as well. So, so what came into being is what we now call the Colorado River Conservation Recreation Project. And this involved mapping of a number of properties along the, uh, the lower stretch of the Colorado. Uh, this would help break up long float distances. We also wanted to identify properties with outstanding conservation values, uh, such as wildlife and scenic features and agriculture. Uh, and then the other thing we wanted to do was understand our, our constraints. Uh, there was a, a takeout at kind of the terminus of the study area that was being lost to the construction of a new bridge. Um, and, of course, the key part of this was to initiate contact with landowners, engage the BLM, and additional project partners. So the study resulted in identification of six properties that we felt were critical to creating a system of uh, public access and also um, conserved land. And it listed these six properties, State Bridge, Two Bridges, Derby Junction, Red Dirt, Colorado River Ranch, and the Dotsero Landing property. Um, and they're identified on this map. You can see the river goes from uh, northeast to southwest through the county, and the stars indicate the locations of each of these six properties. We thought that if we were to acquire these six, uh, in, coupled with the existing BLM access points, that we would really effectively stretch out use from the upper area, which actually extends into the county to our north, stretch some of that public use down into the uh, lower part of the river. So we went under contract. We negotiated the purchase of three of uh, what we call the boat launch properties. State Bridge was the first one. Uh, the seller agreed to sell it to us for $1.6 million. We went under contract in the summer of 2011. Uh, the BLM had, like I said, tried to acquire this property numerous times before unsuccessfully, but they said if Eagle County was able to acquire it, they would happily um, join into an MOU uh, to help us with management. Um, State Bridge was identified by virtually all of the river guides and outfitters as being the most important site. Uh, if we were to acquire even just one of the six, this, is, this was the top priority. Um, we agreed that with BLM we would um, assess a, a user fee, and that would be shared between Eagle County Open Space and the BLM. The Two Bridges property is four miles downriver from State Bridge. It was owned by an outfitter uh, who similarly blocked other outfitters and the public from using uh, the, the property. This site, if acquired, would successfully break up the 13-mile float into a 4-mile float and a 9-mile float. And this was really identified as the second, uh, the, the kind of the number two priority. And that purchase came with a 543-acre state land board property um, that came with the purchase, and that was a state, state land board piece. We acquired the recreation lease on that, so now we've opened up that as well. Uh, we got an agreement in summer of 2011 to purchase this for $690,000. Dotsero is the, is the, at the project terminus. We were losing a takeout that had been used for decades because Department of Transportation was replacing the bridge, and they told us the, um, the current takeout was, was going to go away. Um, again, we got this under contract summer of 2011, and um, yeah, well, all three of those were we're ready to go. So we closed on all three of those properties in fall of 2011. The planning for boat launch construction started shortly thereafter. Uh, the plan was to um, get all of these properties open in 2012. 
And uh, at about that time, Great Outdoors Colorado, which is the state uh, lottery proceeds go for land conservation and outdoor recreation projects, GOCO is what we call them, they announced a $32 million pot uh, through what they call the Rivers Initiative Program. Uh, and so this is a little bit of foreshadowing to, to kind of phase two of, of, the, of the project. Um, this is the Colorado River Ranch, which was uh, identified on that map previously. This property, the, the Eagle Valley Land Trust had tried to negotiate a purchase of a conservation easement on this for several years uh, unsuccessfully. Um, we thought it's got two miles of Colorado River. It's got very senior water rights, outstanding wildlife habitat. There's a, a, a lot of connectivity between the Flat Tops Wilderness Area to the west and the Bull Gulch Wilderness Study Area to the east. We really wanted to get this protected. This property had been zoned at one point for 58 houses, uh, golf course, uh, riding arenas, barns, uh, you name it. Um, so we really wanted to get this property protected. Um, in the 2012, we reached an agreement with the landowner to purchase a conservation easement plus three public access easements across the ranch. Uh, the water rights would be tied to the land. It involved um, the conservation easement allowed one residential building envelope. They can build one home site on uh, over, it's a, I think a 8,000 square foot house they can build, but that's on a thousand acre property, so that was something we could live with. Colorado Open Lands is a statewide land trust where we asked them to be the conservation easement holder. We, we made it clear that we needed GOCO money to come in to fund the transaction, and the contract was signed uh, literally two hours before the um, Rivers Initiative grant deadline. So it was a, a, a pretty dramatic day. The other property um, that we wanted that was more of a land conservation piece was uh, the Red Dirt Creek parcel, 228 acres, an additional 1.7 miles of Colorado River frontage. This is upstream from Colorado River Ranch. Um, this property had had been under contract to the county before um, but we struggled in the early days. Everybody thought of all these properties as being boat ramps, and this property had very poor access, uh, and it just wasn't going to serve as a boat ramp well. But the committee, the open space program, really liked the property, so we thought about it in somewhat different terms. We said, let's let's quit thinking about this as a boat ramp property. It just doesn't work because of the bad access. But it's 220 acres of outstanding habitat in a mile point seven of the river, so. Um, didn't want to let that slip away, and so um, we got we got it under contract again for 2.35 million. The key, of course, would be this GoCo grant that we submitted involving both of these properties. Uh, this had been used for historically for agriculture. There's some neat old historic buildings on it. Um, there's a great view of it, and it's surrounded by BLM on three sides. So uh, it's kind of a hole in the donut that we really wanted to fill. So we got the property back under contract. Um, we decided not to go, not to think of it as a boat ramp. It's primitive river access. I'm not going to stop anybody from putting a boat on there, but we're not going to build a big boat ramp on this property. This is really filling that land conservation uh, part of the spectrum. We've also added a couple of backcountry campsites, which were added to facilitate multi-day river trips. Um, we've we've built built is too strong of a term. We've We've established one backcountry campsite, and it's just now starting to get used. We're going to bundle both of these two properties into one GOCO grant. Uh, Colorado Open Lands, again, the statewide land trust agreed to hold both conservation easements. So the total purchase price for these, these two larger acreage pieces was 7.85, um, and we requested that Great Outdoors Colorado fund 50% of the purchase price. There were 65 concept papers that came in throughout the state as part of that grant cycle. 17 were invited to submit full proposals ultimately. Only the top eight were funded and ours ranked number five. So we, we were successful and got a $3.96 million grant to go towards the purchase of these two uh, larger acreage tracks. Um, so again, um, got them all teed up. There were a lot of challenges in, in getting across the finish line, but we closed both of these properties in December of 2012. And uh, 
there was much rejoicing. Um, the one thing I mentioned, we we also got as part of the Colorado River Ranch project was a public access easement. This was a ramp that we built in 2013. Um, and we opened it in the fall, so it really didn't start getting used until spring of 2014. Now it's it's very heavily used. Um, there's our access point. We called it Horse Creek. We didn't want to confuse it with Colorado River Ranch, which is the private. Most of that ranch doesn't have public access. We gave it a slightly a different name. Of course, we all um, acknowledge our partners on our signage. And uh, big celebration. So if you look at the overall project, uh, it's nearly 1,300 protected acres, including uh, almost four miles of Colorado River. We've built four new boat ramps, uh, with including, in, in addition to one primitive access, that's that red dirt parcel with the bad driveway. Uh, it costs $6.66 .66 in acquisition funds from Eagle County Open Space, uh, plus $3.96 million from Great Outdoors Colorado. The improvements, all of the boat ramps, the parking lots, the restrooms, um, driveway, um, the uh, engineering costs, uh, all the permitting at the end of the day cost an additional 1.15 million. Um, and 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 this is a property too. This wasn't part of the original plan, uh, but this property was subsequently acquired, uh, and it actually has a cabin on it. Uh, and we're in the process of putting the cabin up for rent. It's boat access only. You can't get there by car. Um, but it's a little cabin. Uh, again, part of what we wanted to do was to facilitate multi-day float trips. And so um, this cabin will be uh, available for public rent uh, rental coming up here this summer. So um, our partners are key. Uh, we, we have the funds to do this project, and we certainly had the political will. Our county commissioners were very interested in um, protecting outstanding aspects of the Colorado River and, and also providing increased public um, recreational access. The conservation fund was hugely um, helpful with the Colorado River Ranch transaction. Great Outdoors Colorado, of course, they put in nearly $4 million. Colorado Open Lands um, is the land trust that holds those easements. Two offices of the BLM, the Kremlin office and the Colorado River Valley Field office were, were both instrumental. Um, and we have since done MOUs on all three boat ramp properties, so they take care of these. We, we paid for the acquisition, we paid for the improvements. They manage these properties and they collect the user fees and we share those at the end of every river season. Um, Eagle County Attorney, GIS, Project Management, Engineering, Finance, a lot. It takes a village to raise a, a program like this. Uh, I've got a Citizen Open Space Advisory Committee that was very helpful, American Rivers, um, a lot of um, leveraging and, and um, celebration and press releases and support letters. Uh, so good to have that kind of that public outreach component. Uh, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, Eagle River Watershed Council. A lot of the river guides and outfitters, they were chief proponents of this. Uh, they saw this that, that, that even though we had a lot of river use upstream from State Bridge, there was very little use downstream and they felt like with a handful of other access points we could um, you know, we could really enhance public use of that. And of course, Trout Unlimited as well, they're a um, uh, big partner as well. So that's kind of it. Uh, it's, it's been very successful. We're not done yet. I, I, you know, as we've closed deals in this area, one of the things that's come up, other landowners have kind of come out of the woodwork and have expressed interest in selling to us. And there are several other properties we're uh, considering at this point. So. Um, the original vision, I think, is largely, has largely been completed. We've acquired five of the six original properties, um, but by no means are we done on the Colorado River. It's, it's been a, a great success, and the public has, has liked it, um, and I think we'll um, continue, to, continue to do more. Rivers are a, a key part of our program. And, you know, I should also say, too, that um, we're looking to kind of replicate some of these efforts on the Eagle River which is more proximate to where most of the population in Eagle County lives, the Vail, Avon, Eagle, Gypsum corridor along Interstate 70. We're looking to kind of do some of the same stuff. It's, it's a more challenging area because there are smaller parcels, there's a lot more population, 
um, but in some respects, from an access standpoint, that makes it um, that much more important to um, try and replicate this effort on the Eagle River. So I think that's I think that's it. That's it. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Toby and Jessica, for um, the really great first of all overview, and then just deeper dive into the really fantastic work, Toby, that um, you're doing on the Upper Colorado and hopefully the Eagle soon um, with the Open Space Program and then with all of your partners um, as well. So we've got about um, you know a couple minutes here for some last questions um, that folks might have. So I've got a couple um, a couple that have popped up during the webinar. But um, if you have any other questions at this point, um, as I mentioned before, there is a little question box in your GoToWebinar side panel that you can go ahead and um, type your questions into. Um, but we will uh, go ahead and get started. Um, and oh, and as I mentioned before. Um, all of the questions will have a transcript um, available on our Blue Trails Guide, bluetrailsguide.org slash blog that will have all of the questions um, and the various answers listed um, by the 30th of May, so the end of the month. Um, and by May, said, sorry, I mean June. It's June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. So, Toby, uh, the first question that we've got for you is, um, what were the biggest sources of funding for um, for the work that you did along the Colorado River Ranch? Um, sorry, the Colorado River Project. I know you had mentioned a couple of different places that you found funding, so if you could um, just dive a little bit deeper into that, that would be great. Yeah, the, there's the primary one is the open space property tax, which is collected in Eagle County. It's um, the voters approved it in 2002. It works out to about $13 per 100,000 of assessed valuation. That's a property tax collected annually. And that, that was the primary source of funds. It, it's, it was set aside, set aside every year for acquisitions that um, meet a range of open space criteria. And the other, the other big one was Great Outdoors Colorado, which is our lottery money. All the lottery money in Colorado, it's about $56 million a year that they just spread statewide precisely for projects that um, conserve outstanding landscapes um, and provide uh, increased recreational access. And then a, a little bit sort of on the tail end is, of course, the user fee that we collect. Um, that Obviously, that wasn't useful in our acquisition, but that's useful to us in kind of managing and, and keeping these properties up. It's, it's not a lot of money, but um, it is useful. But, but the, main, the main source of that was Eagle County open space funds, which are through property tax. Great. Thanks, Toby. Um, the second question is um, actually something that I've been wondering a lot about recently, and, and your, um, your comment that you just made sort of reminded me of it. With um, kind of the management and maintenance of the various boat sites, I know that you mentioned that you have an MOU um, with the BLM to help um, manage these sites, but what, I mean, how much money does that cost, and is it totally covered by user fees, or are there other um, sources of funding that you have to use for those components as well? Um, it's mostly, well, the MOUs that we did with BLM were great because we, we recognize, they sort of recognize our comparative strengths. Our strength is pulling together partnerships and doing acquisitions and getting improvements done. Their strength is much more so in managing properties. So the MOU really pulls on that, that sense of um, our collective strength. So, you know, for the most part, they do most of the management, so I don't have to fund that. Um, and, and what they don't, what they have their own operating budget, of course, and then the, and the, and then the user fees kind of supplement that. So um, I think for the most part, they've got it covered. Now we have hired this year, for the second time, we've hired a seasonal ranger. Um, and he's, we're actually gonna buy him a raft and he's, he's a river safety guy, he's, done, he's an EMT, he does all this great. He's really well trained to do safety stuff on the river, um, and that's been funded also out of open space. So it's, you know, again, everything we sort of um, do some stuff. They BLM does some stuff. Um, somehow we manage to make it all work, and user fees are a part of that. Um, but I wouldn't say they they fund the bulk of that. Great. That's super helpful. So I think we've got time for just one more quick question, um, and then we will have all of these again available online. Um, 
the, uh, the last week of June. But um, the question is, uh, does the prevalence of public lands in Eagle County create challenges um, for finding additional open space acquisitions in Eagle County over the long term? Like, have you noticed that because the first slide that you showed, there's quite a bit of public land already um, available in Eagle County. Are people less willing, or have you noticed that that's been an issue at all? You know, I spend every day looking at the map of Eagle County, and in some respects, it's not a target-rich environment for conservation because 85% is already federal. And then you take out what's already been developed and roads, and um, and then there are some properties that you know don't have strong conservation values. So, in some respects, it is a, it is tough to pick out good open space projects thus far. I mean, it, land is so expensive here, and the starting point is ten thousand dollars an acre, uh, and it goes up from there. I mean, we've spent we've spent a lot more than that on some pieces. Um, you know, it, it it is a trick, not. I can always pick small pieces that work on the access end of the spectrum, but the larger pieces that really have broad conservation values, um, absolutely, it, it is a trick. And um, we've got a lot of land and corporate ownership here. Uh, that's challenging as well. So it, you know, in some respects, we, we've had some success. Um, there's a lot more to do. Um, and, and, in, and in yeah, many respects, it is challenging. That federal land is, uh, and that's one of the reasons I think there's some people in the community that don't support the program, is because we've already got 85% open space. Why do we need more? So, um, yeah, in many respects, it is a it is kind of a challenging environment in which to pull together, again, particularly the large, large pieces of uh, of land for conservation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Toby. Um, well, with that, guys, just being um, cognizant of time, we are just over 30 minutes. So um, I'm going to stop the questions at that point, um, but we will have, again, all of those available online um, in the next week or so. Um, again, a big thank you, uh, Toby, to you for your great presentation and for all of the work that uh, you're doing and you continue to do along uh, the Eagle and Upper Colorado. I know that um, it's, a, it's a great place to, to visit and to live. So. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and Jessica, thank you for your great presentation. And a big thanks to all of you guys who uh, joined us. I look forward um, to having you join us next month. So stay tuned um, for more information about our July webinar. Have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks so much. I didn't go to the